I felt the cold awakening It rattled through my bones A familiar place I've known well Now solidified in stone Screaming in my echo chamber To justify my place I walk the coals in dire need For those laughing in my face They were frightened by a frequency That was spinning in the night But then something opened up the clouds And the darkness turned to light On a road that rides the righteous From the bare the consequence Through the valley of forgiveness To the land of our last chance It was a road that rides the righteous From the bare the consequence Through the valley of forgiveness To the land of our last chance Decided to make a quick run up to one of our spots tonight to get some cameras up um, because of spring bear season and uh, some other things going on in uh, May and uh, April. Uh, we're a little bit, a little bit slower to get cameras out this year. We have a few out, but um, not as many as we'd like. So we had a few spare hours tonight. So we just grabbed as many cameras as we could. We we like to hang typically two to three cameras in each spot. We usually put one on picture mode and then we'll hang one on a trail nearby on video mode and uh, that way we get a better idea of kind of how they're moving through here and um, what time of day and kind of just what, what that looks like. But uh, um, this spot in particular that we're up tonight doesn't usually actually get a lot of activity throughout most of the summer uh, or spring, but come the fall it's definitely one of our, our favorite spots. So if we can get a look at a buck that's living in the area, um, that's that's the goal. Uh, every every once in a while we'll get one that that holds up in here all year. That's a good one that we'll keep an eye on. But um, we'll probably give it a few weeks uh, before we get them checked. But if we don't get them checked for a couple months, not a big deal. Uh, we just want to know what's been in here throughout the summer. It's currently late October of 2019. We're out here setting up our uh, first tree stand. It's in an area we've put one before, but we're changing locations this year because of uh, trail camera footage from last year. Not much activity where we had it last year, but we also know there's a lot of deer in here. So we're making some adjustments. Uh, right now, this year, we're placing it on kind of the edge of this uh, old uh, spur road. Um, a lot of deer travel between here and um, an adjacent cut and uh, some reprod behind us and we just got this older growth uh, timber in here that we're placing it on. We're gonna place stands about uh, 28 and 32 feet up. Um, the ladders I'm putting up here right now are actually a Maristep brand ladders um, that believe it or not we bought from Walmart for 20 bucks um, per set and they've uh, lasted, they're a little bit heavy but they've uh, lasted the last few years and they go up pretty easy. Uh, so, and then the tree stands we're actually using are old um, Baby Grands, uh, I forget the the brand of the company that makes them, but they're 20 year old tree stands that uh, grandfather and father bought um, probably back either, uh, fr maybe even late 90s, but early 2000s, I think. Um, once we get the ladders up, we pretty much use a, a lineman's belt to get up the tree uh, while we're putting the ladders up, and then once we're about halfway up to where we want, we get the um, safety rope out and we'll get that up and we'll just move it up as we put the ladders up that way we're at least tied in this one's a hunter safety system lifeline we use the tandem one um, the long tandem this is a 42 foot rope since uh, our ladder uh, gets up to about 32 feet and um, we hang two two stands in every tree just in case we want to do uh, a filmer shooter setup we 
We, a lot of times now um, sit by ourselves that way we can, we can cover the area. Uh, low stand is generally the shooter, high stand is usually the filmer and then um, we set them both up to be able to self film out of either one uh, should we want to. So that includes obviously bow rope um, which I'll put up here, um, GoPro mount to put up above us for a second angle, uh, a couple of bow hangers. Um, and then we got mounts for, we use, we've been using the fourth arrow uh, camera arms the last couple of years and those work really well. So uh, fourth arrow bases, so um, we'll get everything set up to where we think it's going to be good and then um, we'll be ready for opening morning. We're all falling and we need a place to hide A safe place somewhere in the woods we can start the fire All we know is what will be our home We will stay until Break of dawn. It's opening morning of Oregon's late archery black tail season here. It's about 8.30 right now. I just had a small two by three work its way in here. Rat filled his tag early in the season, so he's not sitting in a stand this morning, but Cody Wyatt and I are all out here. And, um, Cody and Wyatt are in two different stands, so we're covering three different areas right now. Cold night takes us to a place to escape the chill. Tucked up somewhere in the woods on a hill Wake up feeling the cold in between our toes Is there a way back? Nobody knows today. Uh, I'm going to crawl out and hit it again tomorrow.
shot a bug. Um, he came in. There was a, a fork and horn and two does in. And the forky started running this doe around. And so I brought it from where they were hanging out all morning. Brought it back over here behind me. And as I was videoing him, this three point with eye guards came in. And uh, he, him and the fork and horn kind of play, sparred, didn't get real, uh, real heavy. And then he came under my stand and came out about 20 yards. I couldn't be more pumped right now. Well, found the buck. Um, the shot looked a little uh, suspect, so I got out with my bow and decided to trail it down. I couldn't find blood for about 60 yards, and then I finally got on a, on a small blood trail. Um, and 40 yards after finding blood, he was piled up in the brush that I watched him, that I watched him disappear into. So uh, we got a, a nice three-point down. Uh, we got three more tags to fill. We got Cody Wyatt and Dad to fill. Um, hoping the luck continues. This is the second day. Can't believe it. I can't. The blacktail season's already over for me, but uh, I'll uh, continue to to check check trail cameras and and check spots as long as we have tags to fill. So anyway, I'm gonna go go take a peek at him again. Day two. Um, this morning was a little better than yesterday morning. I at least got to see some deer. Um, we had two separate does come in with two fawns each. And then about 15 minutes before shooting light, a buck was running around in here, grunting and snorting and wheezing. And he ended up circling and moving out, but um, Good news is Orn, Orn shot a three point, so that's cool. So we got one down, we got three tags left, so we're hoping we can maybe get another one down this evening and then kind of keep chunking away at it from there, but Orn's got one down, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm gonna sit here for the rest of the day and I'll have to wait till next weekend if, if I don't get it done. So either way, it's fun sitting up here and it's pretty relaxing. Sunday, second day of the season. I've seen a spike this morning, that's about it. So, I don't know how Wyatt's has gone. He, uh, he got skunk yesterday in his stand, which is, uh, I don't know if that's happened before in that stand. Um, especially not on the opener, so. Maybe they're just not moving a ton. They are moving in some areas. It's pretty exciting. Looks like Orrin got a, got a decent buck. One of the bucks we were after. Um, not the biggest in the area that he's sitting, but good buck nonetheless it looks like uh, that means we got Wyatt and I to go and then maybe dad depending on how much he feels like getting out so it's day four of the season uh, we are walking through the clear cut to get to our spot and we bumped the buck that we've been waiting on out here um, he was in yesterday morning during the daylight uh, while dad was at work and then um, he was just out about 400 yards from our stand and we kind of bumped him this direction and he was uh, he was on a doe. So um, it looked like they holed up in this timber behind us here that we're sitting in. It's a really, really nice buck that we've um, had on camera since the summer and we've watched since the summer in this area. So we're hoping they come into our spot tonight.
7.13. I just shot the 3x6 about five minutes ago. He came in. I was up here an hour and a half before light. He came in. It was I could hear deer moving in here about five minutes in the light, but in the timber it's still too dark to see. So I didn't want to move. So I didn't move at all. And then as the light changed, I could just see a buck right below me, but I couldn't tell what it was. I just kind of waited it out till I could see what he was. And I slowly turned on the camera and got the got the main camera on him. It's, he's really spooky. I mean, he's one of the spookiest tears that I've shot at. I think the shot was good. I mean, I watched where he went and then I heard him crashing. So I think, I think if I walk over there, he's gonna be dead. So. <laughs> It's the second weekend I've gotten to hunt, and we're only 20 minutes into first light, and I got a buck down. <laughs> Cody uh, is in the stand right now, and Dad's in the stand. They have no no clue that I just shot one, so I was I was worried the movement's been slow the past. I mean, into opening weekend it was pretty slow in our areas, and I didn't see much opening weekend. Didn't see a deer the first day, only saw a Forky the second day, and then things change just quick like that. I love it. Number two down. Well, my hunt's wrapped up. Um, kind of weird, a little different than last year. Well, not much different than last year, but a little shorter season it felt like for me because I could only hunt Saturday and Sunday last week uh, on the opener and then uh, Sunday, Saturday morning, this morning, that buck came in right away and I got a shot at it. So um, we only have two left. So uh, hopefully dad can put a big one down and Cody can put a big one down. Uh, deer are moving, so it's good chances. But on to the next one. Saturday afternoon, second weekend. Decided to come sit a different stand again tonight. The stand dad hunted uh, this morning, the stand that he's been hunting isn't too far from this one. So him and Red checked the camera at this location this morning on their way out. It looks like there's a couple decent bucks that came through this morning in the stand. So maybe there's a hot doe around and uh, one of those bucks will come back through. It was cold this morning, it's still a little bit chilly out, but sun's out, so uh, odds are if anything comes by tonight, it's probably gonna be in that last hour, last half hour. That's kind of what I'm expecting, so it'll be a couple hours sim, probably nothing, and then maybe an opportunity right at the end, which is fine with me if it's a good one. As the decision this evening, it paid off. Um, 
A bunch of does just came off the trail with a big four point chasing them. Big four point that we've been after. It's one dad's been after, I've been after. But mostly dad this last week. But unfortunately, I didn't make a good shot. Unfortunately, got guts. So, not a good situation. He, he went out. I thought I had a window between these trees over here. About uh, 35, 40 yards out. And I shot again, and I missed to the right of him, over over him. He went up and he bedded back up here to my left and um, laid down. And then he got up and um, and then bedded down again. Well, I I glassed him up with my binoculars. Kind of like there's some brush in between us, but it was just a clear enough window where I thought I could squeeze a shot in. And so I ranged him. He's 65 yards. And um, anyways, he. Uh, he stood up, 65 yards, I drew back, put the 65 on him, or my pin on him, and shot again. And uh, I hit him again. Uh, got a lot of adrenaline going through me. A lot of emotions right now. I'm not, not, um, not very pleased, but uh, he's got two arrows in him. I'm hoping we got blood. Um, and then hopefully we give him time and, and he expires, but I don't know if I rushed it, but did I, I didn't make the shot. I'm just trying to calm down right now, cause uh, I'm about, I'm about in, A lot of emotions going right now. About in tears, to be quite honest. I'm not I'm just praying that that this buck is is not too far up here dead or at least bedded, because that's not how I wanted this night to go. Oh my goodness. Well, so for, like I said, we're just gonna give it time, but I'm just gonna sit here for a while. Do what we can. Hopefully, hopefully I got something that that uh, gets him to expire quick. Because it's just I just don't like this situation. Oh. It's Sunday morning, just after light right now. I hit the buck a little bit far back in the guts uh, yesterday. So we decided to give it overnight. Um, hopefully he bedded not too far from here and, and died, but uh, we'll see. So we're gonna start looking. Holy crap, he's right here. I didn't realize he went down. I thought he went into the brush. Oh my goodness. That went much better than my worst fears. <laughs> I mean, we're 100, 120 yards from the tree stand. Uh, I have a little bit of a, a adrenaline, buck fever, whatever, emotional, whatever you want to call it, problem as far as deer hunting goes. I think what happened is, is unfortunately, last night I got excited fast and I rushed, rushed through everything. My first shot um, was almost a perfect broadside quartering shot. I didn't act like I had all the time in the world, and I honestly probably did, and I, and I just rushed the shot and put it too far back is what happened, I think. And then he went out and stood 30, 40 yards from me. I knew the distance and um, shot that. I thought I missed, but apparently I got him on that one as well. And then uh, he went out, bedded down, got up again. I had clicked the brush that he was going into at 65. He stood up and I shot again, and unfortunately I put that one back, so I think I don't think I ever got settled down. It's just, it's a, it's a difficult thing when we are looking for these deer year round. And then when you, you're in the heat of the moment and in the 30 seconds that you need to be at your best to execute and you don't execute it, it's uh, not a fun feeling. This turned out, but it, uh, a lot of heartache.
this part of the season is always kind of unfortunate. We have a bunch of different tree stands that need to be taken down and I've already gotten a couple of them back home. So um, I'm back here at the one that dad and I spent most of our time together in. We had a great season this year. We were able to fill every one of our deer tags. Um, as far as blacktail goes, um, I was able to help mom kill one of her nicest blacktails yet. I sat a new stand, which is, I took down yesterday, and um, was able to take advantage of an awesome, awesome three-point that came in on the second day of season. And then Wyatt, Wyatt on his on the third day of his hunt, he was able to take an awesome three by six. And Cody filled his tag on that on that four-point. It um, didn't quite go as planned as far as shot placement, but uh, ultimately at the end of the day, we were able to. Um, successfully harvest his deer and dad and I were sitting in the stand that I'm going to take down right now and uh, Forky walked in in front of us and um, uh, dad and I decided that it was uh, it would be a great buck to finish off the season. It was an absolutely awesome season. We're super blessed to have the success that we had. Uh, hoping that it continues into next year and it never really stops. It just is a year-round thing and anyway I'm going to work back here and kind of begin the process of closing down the season and ready to go for next year.